Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley. And one question I get asked probably more than any other question is, should you ground your Faraday cage? All right, so I want to do a simple experiment today uh, to see the effects of grounding a Faraday cage. So what I've done is I've built up a very simple Faraday cage. Primarily, it's covered in aluminum foil and it's got some copper tape to hold it all together. Um, but the front of it is this conductive mesh, all right, sort of a shield-like material. Now that's not ideal for a Faraday cage, but I use something like this because I want to be able to see the results and show you the results without having to open the cage and, and maybe disrupt the experiment, all right? So I've built up a Faraday cage. I've put inside something called a spectrum analyzer, which is going to show us uh, the strength of the signal received inside, the strength of the field in there, all right? So even though we have a Faraday cage around the instrument, it's not going to block all of the energy. In fact, I'm going to use a very strong transmitter so that the energy can get inside. And then I'm going to do the experiment first with it ungrounded. And then I've got a ground connection here um, that I'm going to then attach to the Faraday cage. And we're going to see if the results change. All right, so that's the experiment we're going to do. So I'm going to use a two-way radio um, to act as the source of the RF energy. Now, I know it's not the same as an EMP but it runs at about 460 megahertz, which is right in the sweet spot of the high frequency energy of an EMP. So it's a pretty good representation of how well this grounding would affect the system. So I'm gonna place it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the transmit button. And what you'll see is that the energy level will rise up right in about the center of the screen there. All right, so I'll go ahead and click the transmit button. All right, you can see it rise up there and it goes up to about, oh, minus 83, minus 84 dBm, all right? dBm is a measure of the power level of that signal that gets in there. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply take the ground connection, we're gonna attach it to the Faraday cage, and we're gonna repeat the experiment without changing anything. All right, here we go. All right, let it come up, and what we see is that the level is about minus 86, or maybe 86 and a half dBm, all right? so the net effect of grounding it was only about maybe 2 dB, all right, very small net effect. And the reason it has any real effect is because we're very close to the transmitting source. If I took the radio across the room and I repeated the experiment, you wouldn't really see any change at all, all right? We're, we're approaching to being in the near field of this radio where things start to have an effect whether they're grounded or not. In the case of an EMP, which occurs many miles away, maybe hundreds of miles away, the effect of grounding the Faraday cage would be essentially zero. You wouldn't really notice any difference whether it was grounded or not in terms of the field levels inside, all right? So again, what we're doing is we're just trying to measure the effects of grounding, and what we saw is that with, with the ground cable attached, again, I'll go ahead and turn it on, we ended up with a value of about minus 86 or so dBm. We then disconnect the ground cable so that now it's ungrounded. We repeat the experiment. and we get up to a level of maybe about minus 85, 84, 85 dBm. So again, a one to two dB difference in the, the amount of signal that got inside there, which is very, very small. In fact, that's sort of in the margin of error of the experiment here, all right? So the short answer is, should you ground your Faraday cage? It doesn't really do you anything to ground it uh, when you're doing EMP protection. Now, we'll mention that if you're trying to protect something against, let's say, electrostatic discharge, which is like a lightning breakdown or something like that, Certainly having the cage grounded makes sense because it gives it a path for that high current energy to flow away to ground, all right? But that's not what we're doing in the case of an EMP. In the case of an EMP, we're trying to protect against a radiated pulse that comes in and the conductive material will act to reflect it as well as absorb it, regardless of whether or not it is grounded, all right? I hope that answers the question. Feel free to go ahead and post questions and comments and I'll do my best to try and answer them.